The hippos have a little chat, apparently. I wonder what they are talking about. <laughs> maybe how they, start, they are starting the day. Well, maybe. You know, they are coming out mm. uh, from the water now. Yep. Taking a sun bath on the warm river banks. Magnificent scenery. Yeah. Of course, it also shows when I just go a little closer on this one. When the river comes up, this is how high it gets. And when you look across how wide it is, you can imagine the sheer mass of water coming from upstream. Water level surely clouds must be rising by seven, eight meters. That's for sure. And the river flows into the Sambesi. Yes, one of the contributors. Yes, yes, yes. The, the main contributor. Yeah. Yes. Well, it flows into the Zambezi here in Zambia. In Zambia. Not, yes. not in not Zimbabwe. In, not in, in Zambia. Yeah. Zambia. We take a little further look. This is up the river. So what we have seen this morning is a number of elephant. Plenty of impala, the Sambian equivalent of the Uganda cop, distant relatives who obviously have a perfectly good environment here. And we've seen plenty of birds, a battler eagle. Unfortunately, the light was not good enough to get a good shot of that, but there are a couple of good stills coming up of a lilac-breasted roller we saw. And we saw hornbills and plenty of other birds. Oxpeckers, a whole flock of them flying out of a thicket when we drove by. And on the other side of the river I can see again some elephant. Let's see how... That's right. Klaus told me there are some 20,000 elephant in and along the Luangwa well. Valley. That's a lot of elephant. Yes, and there were 100,000. <coughs> Once upon a time. In the 60s. Once upon a time, there were a hundred thousand people on this planet. <laughs> yeah. Long, long ago. And here are the hippos coming out, slowly, slowly. They leave their wet environment behind and come out to the riverbank. Dose and snooze and soak up warmth, which of course they don't have in the river itself. Now in the background there, I'm just going a little bit further away, that's the way. What do we see there? This is part of the great African Rift Valley, Klaus told me, and this is probably the last stretch because the Great Rift Valley starts in the Red Sea, and comes across through Djibouti and Ethiopia, through East Africa with two main arms, one in Kenya, the other one in Uganda. And then it goes all the way down through Tanzania into Malawi and Mozambique and Zambia. And this is where the Great Rift Valley ends. And this is the last part of the escarpment we can see from the Rift Valley. 
that does not mean that Africa is one country, as it is regularly mistakenly believed by the Western media. But God, whenever do they get anything right? CNN, the hotbed of errors. <laughs> Africa is very varied. Got over 50 countries. Am I right to say, Klaus, about 53? 54. 54! Yeah, yeah. Yes, South Sudan, of course! <laughs> Not to forget last that one! Last yes. one got independent. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, some of the features we see in some countries in East Africa pass on all the way down to Southern Africa, to somewhere and to Zimbabwe. And uh, then again, you find very different features in some countries, some absolutely unique, like of course the Victoria Falls. You don't find those anywhere else. Although the Ugandans are saying that the Murchison Falls are the most potent waterfalls on the globe because that river squeezes through a gap of just seven meters, the entire Victoria Nile. Uh, the waterfalls there, waterfalls here. In Zambia, I think, my friend Ilse Mwanza wrote a book about the lesser-known waterfalls of Zambia. And there, there are hundreds, I believe, she listed and she documented. So this is a country which is obviously very rich in water sources and, and rivers. And not so much lakes, I think, but rivers, definitely. Rivers, more rivers, yes. Yeah, also some lakes, yeah. but, uh, more rivers. And of course, this river empties, we heard that earlier on, this river empties into the mighty Sambesi. But below the falls. Yes. Below the falls. Yeah. Well, you know, a little bit more about my journey through Zambia and into the Luangwa National Park which is one of the premier parks the Zambian National Park Authority manages. And park entrance for a foreign non-resident costs an astonishing $25, I'm told. Yeah. Unlike in Kenya or in Uganda or in uh, Tanzania, where they just heaped 18% VAT on park entrance fees, where it is very, very much more expensive. So coming down to South Africa does have its advantages. Certainly Zambia and Zimbabwe give me the impression that overall, maybe apart from the airfares, I think airfares maybe to Nairobi may be uh, a little cheaper because there is more traffic there. But generally, I think safari holidays here in Zambia and in Zimbabwe are in comparison quite affordable That's true. and there are less people the camps are smaller and while they might be full like where I'm staying uh, right now uh, they were full last night there are much more much less people because uh, this lodge there you are let's just go there and show you what the lodge is called that's the one, yes. Kafunta. Yes. They only got ten cabins, two of them suites. Mm -hmm. So we have seen today in total, just a short while ago, another three vehicles. And before then, and, and in fact, I think two of those we have seen before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, together with us, there are probably five vehicles right now in this part of the park. And we've seen the lair of a leopard. We are going back there because lunch is served, as you will <laughs> see later on. You, you know, the prey is already hanging up in the tree. I'm so elephant, and you, you know, this is just something we had to ourselves. We didn't have to share with 50 cars or with 80 cars, and we are looking for lines, isn't it? Yes, we should be looking for lines. We should be looking for lines yes, too. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard any roaring yet. 
maybe Ephraim wants to do a roar. I should try. You should try, yes. Mm. Well. <laughs> Once again. Mm. Ooh. 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 <laughs> Ooh. But I heard them last yes. night. Yeah, last time they could. Speak. Last night there were lines actually, you know, outside. Well, welcome to Zambia. Uh, I must say this was a real eye-opener so far and I'm sure it will continue to be one. Klaus. Yes, please. We'll be talking to you later and get your own impressions of what brought you to Zambia and what you love about the country, what you love about this park, which you have obviously chosen as your residence for half a year, every year when you come down here to manage a small safari camp, part of Katunda, Kafunda, part, part, part of it, but three hours drive away. We'll talk about that later. Pleasure. Uh, probably during the course of lunch. Fine, and Pleasure. for you readers and viewers, you've seen through my eyes and through the lens of my camera what I see. And I hope you enjoy what you see. Welcome to Zambia again.